This video will show you how to attach a flange to the lid for your uh, lidded slab box and how to attach a foot. So my box is already constructed. My walls are constructed. I finished that. I'm going to keep that wrapped in my bag. It's It has some damp paper towel around it. Um, and I'm just going to leave that in my bag for right now. Um, my foot pieces I also have in my bag. I'm not going to be using those pieces just yet. So I always want to make sure that I keep my clay um, pieces covered whenever I'm not working with them. So the first thing that I have to do with my flange pieces, as you can see here, these have just been rough cut. They have not yet um, been cut to template. So I'm going to start off by compressing my slab pieces, cutting them to template, and then I'll show you how to construct this, uh, the flange. Alright, so I have my flange pieces cut to template. The next thing I need to do, um, I've already taken my box out of my bag, so you'll take your box out of your bag. And if it's wrapped in paper towel, uh, we're going to remove that and get rid of it. So I had mine wrapped in damp paper towel so that it could keep the same temperature. So I don't want to reuse this paper towel, I'm just going to throw it away. You're also going to want some water, and that can be in a bucket or a spray bottle would work also, and a piece of paper, and it can just be a scrap piece of paper or a notebook piece of paper, um, some sort of a piece of paper. What we're going to do, we're going to construct our flange, not on top of the lid or the box, but on a piece of paper. What we're going to start off by doing is we want to make a print of our rim here. So in order to get a print so that we can figure out the size of our box, everyone's box is going to be just slightly different just depending on how your walls were attached, how thick your coil was on the seam, um, if your coils were, or I'm sorry, if your slabs were rolled out the same thickness. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just get my finger wet with a little bit of water and I'm just going to kind of rub back and, rub back and forth on all four of the tops of my walls and I want to do this until the top feels kind of slippy and I'm almost getting slip on my finger. Okay, so it's also kind of shiny and I'm going to do this on all four walls. And in order for this to work, you have to go back and forth a few times. You can't just do it once and then be done. You have to go back and forth a couple times. Make sure you're getting the corner also. That's going to be the most important part. Right, and then I'm just going to go around one more time just to make sure. Then I'm going to take my piece of paper, my scrap paper, and I'm going to Place it on top of my box and once I set it down I'm going to leave it where it lies and I'm going to just kind of gently rub along my rim and I'm really focusing especially on the inside of the rim because that's where my flange is going to go so on the inside here and you should almost be able to see the rim through the paper as you're doing this because of the water that we put on the rim. Be careful that you're not rubbing so hard that you're actually rubbing the rim of your box. You don't want to distort the wall. And you should also only be doing this if your clay is leather hard. Okay, so I'm just going to carefully pull 
this off. There we go. And then I'll show you here that it made a print onto my piece of paper. All right, so we're gonna use this to help us to construct our flange. At this moment, I'm not gonna need my box. I'm gonna worry about, so when I, when I put water on here, I kind of made it a little uneven, but right now it's too wet. I wanna let that dry a little bit, so I'm gonna, kind of, I'm gonna come back to mine a little bit and kind of fix up my rim again. But for right now, I'm just gonna stick my box back in my bag. And I wanna have my lid kind of close by, so I'm just gonna take my lid out for a second. And also, be very careful when you're moving your box around um, after you've attached your walls. You don't wanna be moving it too often, so quickly, always be quick with it and make sure you have a place to put it. It's best if you're able to grab it from underneath as well. Alrighty, so I'm gonna put my piece of paper down that has my print of my lid on it. And the most important part of this is gonna be the inside corners. So when I'm as I'm building my flange, I wanna make sure that my flange fits within these corners here. Okay, so that's super important. If your flange comes out past those corners, your lid's not gonna fit on. Another issue you would have, if your flange comes in too far, so if it comes in really far, the lid's gonna wobble. So as accurate as you're able to get it, depending upon the shape that you have here. So I have all of my flange pieces here laid out around me. I'm gonna work on one side at a time, kind of, and show you how to cut. As we're, as we're um, creating our flange, we're, we're basically making a square, a hollow square with these. All right, so I'm gonna start off by lining up one of my flange pieces along one of the wall lines that were created here. And again, I'm trying to make sure that I leave a little bit of space in between the wall and the flange because when I did my, my rubbing, I may not have, have gotten as far in as the wall actually goes. So I wanna give it just a little bit of extra space on the outside. So I'd say this is about an eighth of an inch away from my wall. Now, it kinda depends if you're, if you're, um, sorry, if your box wasn't perfectly squared, you're gonna have to adjust this a little bit more, okay? All right, so the next thing, I'm, I'm gonna build this almost like Lincoln Logs. If you've ever done Lincoln Logs and how they stagger um, across each other. So I'm gonna actually move over to the other side now. This is another nice thing about the banding wheel. I don't have to worry about messing up what I've already done. So I'm gonna line up another one of my flange pieces on the opposite side. Again, I'm looking at the line that was printed, trying to make sure it's parallel with that also, and about an eighth of an inch in from that line. And then my last two pieces, I'm gonna close off my um, square here. So. When I'm looking here, my line's starting to fade, but I wanna, I'm wanna. i still looking at that line and I'm gonna place this piece on top of my other two pieces that I've already made. And again, I'm about an eighth of an inch in. You'll be able to tell, you should be able to tell when, um, okay, so to know if this is gonna fit, you should be able to see where these two pieces join together. So like right in here, right there, I just put a black mark, is a, like the little corner on the inside of my wall. So I wanna make sure that I can see that corner. Now I'm having a hard time seeing it on the other side. So it's almost gonna be like a little pie shape 
where you'll be able to see where the two walls join together. So this is telling me that I need to adjust my flange pieces a little bit more. I might have to bring them in a little bit. And it's a good idea to be looking down on these as you do this and get it right because once you make the cut, it's gonna be almost impossible to fix it. So if you cut it wrong, it'll just stay wrong. All right, so let me put my other slab piece on over here for my flange. I still wanna to try to make sure that I have the same amount of space going inward. All right, so that looks pretty good. So I'd say that I'm about lined up here with my corners. So the next thing to do is to cut. Um, when I make this cut, I want you to see it from a different angle. So I'm gonna readjust my camera so that you can see my cuts better. Okay, so this feels like a better angle for you to see the cut that I'm trying to make. So I'm gonna start by cutting this um, corner. So right now it kind of looks like tic-tac-toe or something, but when we make our cut, we're gonna be creating a 90 degree mitered cut. So to do that, uh, we're gonna be looking at some corners. So I'm gonna start by looking at this inside corner where my two overlapping slabs um, joined, and then this outside corner. Okay, so I have an inside corner and an outside corner. I'm gonna line my fettling knife up so that it is completely straight from that inside corner to that outside corner. So I'm standing above it right now, and I'm looking down, and I'm kind of closing one eye, squinting to make sure I make my cut right. Once I'm certain that I'm lined up correctly, I'm just gonna push straight down through both of my slabs. And then I'm gonna carefully um, kind of hold my pieces like this and then slide my knife out. And I want to be careful not to move any of these pieces just yet. I'm going to turn my banding wheel. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then on the other two sides. All right, so once you have made all of your cuts, it's time to remove all these extra pieces. And then you'll just kind of carefully fit the pieces back together. Okay, that. And then you can look at your print again and just make sure that everything looks like it's in line, that your corners here are gonna fit down into the box. So if you can imagine that this is gonna fit down into the box and hold the lid on. So these pieces look pretty good. It looks like they're gonna, they're gonna be on just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to slip and score my cornered seams together here. And then for the flange only, we are gonna be doing a reinforcement coil. So I'll show you that next. But I'm gonna start by slipping and scoring. I would recommend putting them back into place so you don't forget where yours go. I feel like I flipped mine upside down by accident. So I just attached my flange uh, pieces together. When I did that, a lot of slip got on my piece of paper and I'm kind of worried that my flange is gonna stick to that. So I'm going to swap this out 
and put down a new piece of paper or if you want you can just put yours down on your canvas at your table but I still want to use my banding wheel so I'm just going to use a piece of scrap paper or a piece of paper towel would be okay too and I'm going to carefully peel this off of the paper top or the piece of paper that it's on. I did let my slip dry for like a minute or two before doing this so that I made sure that it wouldn't fall apart. So be very careful with that. We just want to make sure that it doesn't stick to the banding wheel as we do this next step. So I have some soft clay here and you really won't need very much so I just have a little bit here. I'm going to roll out some really thin coils that I'm then going to attach over my seams. This is going to clean up my seams here and it's also going to make my flange more sturdy. I'm only going to do this on one side of my flange. So I'm not going to flip it and do the back side. It's just going to be on the one side. So I'm going to go ahead and roll my coil off to the side here. All right, so that looks pretty good. This will probably be enough to get me a couple of my corners at least. So let me pull this back. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to figure out how much of the coil I'll need for my corner here. And before I do that, I just want to make sure, again, that my seams are joined together pretty well and that, it's not, that I didn't distort it when I moved it. And then I want my coil to go from the inside up over and kind of taper off on the on the corner here. I don't want to make my corner too thick though, so I want to be careful. So I'm just going to kind of, when I get to the corner here, I'm just going to kind of pinch this off like that. And then I'll slip and score this little guy on there. The thinner you're able to make the coil, the better. It'll be less blending, but you want enough of it that it'll actually hold these two pieces together. You also want to be careful of your clay temperature. If your clay feels like it's dry leather hard right now and it's not flexible at all or if it's turning white almost, wrap this in some damp paper towel for like five minutes and see if it hasn't softened up. It'll be easier to blend when the clay's softer and no better ch better chance that it'll stay together. So I'm just gonna very carefully and gently here score right over my seam that I created when I attached um, those two flange pieces together. I'm just gonna score this piece too. And my slip. All right, so while this clay is still soft, um, I want to kind of just gently press it down onto my flange, kind of blend it in with my fingers as much as I'm able to. Just be very careful that you're not pushing out your flange. So it might be a good idea to hold the two pieces where they're joining together, just kind of press them together gently, or at least have your hand there as a support so that you don't separate the seam. And then once you've kind of gone back and forth along the seam, then you're going to start blending this outward. And you may use a modeling tool to help you here. So I'm going to go to this modeling tool that I have here. And I'm scraping and blending. So basically I'm trying to scrape this coil down so that it's filling in the seam that where the two pieces of the flange were joined together. So I'm pressing down and kind of scraping away. But remember the slip, there's the, you know, the slip has made the clay pretty soft. So just be very careful. You don't want to lose your defined edges that you cut away earlier. Now because these slab pieces are flat, I'm going to use the flat side of my modeling tool and I'm going to use this to carefully 
scrape at the clay a little bit more. Just be careful that you don't go too deep. We don't want to scrape away. Um, we don't want to scrape away to make the slab thinner. We're just trying to remove the excess buildup of clay. And then once I get this all down and even, I am going to have to go back in and clean up my outside and inside edge of my flange. So I'm going to carefully cut with my fettling knife. And I just want to reline up my, my knife with the outside edge of my flange piece from up here. And then I'm just going to kind of carefully pull down on some of that extra clay to get it off of there. I'm going to do the same thing going this way also. And then I can maybe go back in with my modeling tool along that edge and just kind of blend like this also. And then on the inside, I can kind of do the same thing, kind of be scraping away some of this extra. Be careful not to let too much clay build up on the inside here or it'll be hard to get your flange off. But really being able to clean this up as much as possible, I'm just scraping that away, that extra clay. It's going to make this fit nicely and it's going to look good. Make sure you're cleaning your tool off as you're working. It does take a little bit of patience to get it um, really nice and clean, but the more time you you spend, you know, cleaning up your edges, the better it's going to look. So keep that in mind. We are going to be rounding some of these corners, and I'll, I'll go over that here in just a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video at this point, and I'm going to do the same thing to my other three corners. do is just to go in with my fingers and blend and round my edges. Um, I don't need to do too much. I just want to make it so that they won't be sharp once these are fired. So I just added a little bit of water to my hands. I'm just going to go around just the outside and inside edge. I'm not going to flip it and do the bottom part. So I'm just gently um, rounding, blending these edges. I also want to make sure I take care to blend my edge. Be careful when you get to the corners. Because the clay is still soft from your coil, you don't want to distort that, but you do want to try to round your corner just a little bit so that it'll fit inside the box a little bit better. blend the outside edges a little bit more once I attach this on. So now I'm just going to do the same thing on the inside. Okay, so I just want to make sure this isn't sticking. It still has some rough edges, but I think it looks a lot better. I'll be able to smooth this more once I have it attached to my lid. The back looks okay too. So this is the side that's going to be slip and scored, so the unfinished side. So the next thing I want to do, I want to make sure I didn't do all this work for nothing. I'm going to get my box back out and I'm going to test the flange before I attach it to my lid to make sure that it's going to fit. 
If it doesn't, I can still trim it at this point. So let me move this out of the way for a minute. Okay, so when my flange goes on my lid, it's gonna be this way, because this, this side's gonna be attached to my lid. So I'm just gonna carefully make sure that it fits down inside. So I'm lucky it does. If it doesn't fit the first time, try turning it because it may only fit well one way, all right? So if it does not fit, at this point you could trim a little bit off of one side or another, or maybe trim a little bit off of maybe your corner if it's sticking out too far, so that's still an option. Once you attach these to the lid, it won't be as easy to fix the flange. So taking the extra step to make sure you get it right will benefit you later. I'm just gonna clear, clean off my workspace. I have a lot of crumbs here from when I was blending those um, reinforcement coils. So you always wanna make sure, especially when you're working with your final product, that you don't get too much clay um, crumbs stuck to everything. Okay. So I'm gonna remove my box, but I'm gonna keep it pretty close by. So I'm just gonna lay it back in my bag and cover it up and I'm gonna grab my lid. So here's my lid piece. Now, I you'll notice that my lid is just plain. So this project that we're, we've been working on can be done um, a couple of different ways and I've taught it a few different ways. So I left my lid unfinished so that way I didn't have to get into too much detail about the other projects, but if you have carved your lid, so if you're getting to this point and your, let, your lid has already been designed and there's some things on it, you're going to want to be very careful with this next step um, when we attach our flange because you don't want to ruin any of the work that you've done on the top. So whenever we're applying pressure, whenever you see me apply pressure to the slab, if you've already started carving or adding on to your lid, you'll want to either make maybe a, a bed for it of like news, um, newspaper or paper towels or a piece of fabric um, or a piece of foam if you have foam available or you can hold it in your hand so that way you can kind of um, brace it the way it needs to be braced. If you have nothing on your lid, then you want to look at your lid slab and decide which side is going to be the top. So whichever side looks best to you, and you can still go in and smooth out some irregularities or some creases or areas that need to be smoothed. So I can still do that, but I like this side better. So I'm going to flip my lid over so that I have the underneath side. So this will be the side that won't be seen as often. And I want to make sure that my slab is laying flat. And I just put, um, again, a piece of paper underneath my slab so that my clay doesn't stick to my banding wheel. Now I'm going to take my um, flange, and this is my rough side. So I'm going to flip this over so that my finished side is face up. And I'm going to center this on my lid and I want to make sure so I'm looking like at the corners here and on the outsides of the flange to make sure that I'm getting that centered it's helpful to look down on that from above so just taking a moment to stand up and look down will be helpful to get your lid on straight All right, so mine feels pretty close right there. So I'm gonna say that's where my flange is going to be placed. I'm gonna grab my wooden scribe tool and I'm gonna trace around the flange so I know where to slip and score. So I'm just gonna make just a little bit of an indention into the clay on the outside of the flange and on the inside. And then I'm going to carefully remove the flange. 
I'm going to set it upside down um, off to the side. You can't really see, but it's going to be off to the side upside down so it's ready to be scored. So now you should be able to see where to score um, on your base, or I'm sorry, on your lid slab. So I'm going to go ahead and score within those two lines that I made. I do encourage you to make sure you're scoring the clay pretty, pretty deep and um, make it pretty textured so that your flange doesn't warp while it's drying. All right, so now that I have both of my pieces scored, I'm about ready to uh, apply the slip, but as I was doing this, I was realizing that it could be very easy to forget which way your flange went on. So I would say before you slip, uh, before you score the clay, just make sure that you have it um, going the right way, and if not, adjust it so that you get it right. I think mine was actually supposed to go like that. I moved it um, when I was scoring. So I'm going to just carefully lift this up so I remember which way it goes. So I'm going to hold this in my left hand, um, kind of off to the side, so I remember that it goes on this way. And I'm going to, oops, sorry about my dog. I'm going to add my slip. I want to make sure there's I want to make sure there's enough slip in here that it's really filling in all of those grooves. I'm going to do the same thing on my flange. And then I'm going to just keep very carefully bring these together. And before the slip dries, you can adjust this, kind of slide it around to make sure that you're back to being lined up centered. I'm then gonna press down just a little bit. Just pressing down to make sure that the two pieces are joining together. You're gonna see that the slip is gonna kinda bubble out from where the two join, or I'm sorry, where the two slabs are joining. So I'm gonna let my slip dry just a little bit and then I will come back and show you, we'll come back in and we'll blend our edges. Okay, so my slip has been drying for maybe about five minutes or so. I'm gonna go back in now with my stiff blending brush. I have, I know it's hard to see from this angle, but I do have a bucket of water near me and my stiff blending brush. And just a reminder that whenever you're using your stiff blending brush, you wanna make sure you get it wet and then you blot off the water so that you're not, we don't want to soak the clay. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to blend right along the edge where my flange meets my lid. And I'm just painting with this gently, smoothing out that edge so that it's seamless. I lift this up, you can see. So I'm trying to remove the seam, basically, where my join is being connected. I'm going to occasionally clean my brush off, make sure I blot it either on my mat or on a piece of paper towel is a great thing to use as well. And I'm also going to be blending the inside of my flange all the way around on the inside and all the way around on the outside. I can also use my stiff blending brush you know, to fix any little surface area um, score marks that might be showing along the surface of my lid. All right, at this point, my flange looks pretty good. The surface of my clay is pretty soft right now from going over it with the water. So I don't wanna handle this too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I want you to store these. 
I have to get my box out and some dry paper towel. 